not only does the financialization of the climate issue not take into account the social problems, I would say also that it doesn't take into account the climate issue itself. Uh, the climate markets are really uh, partly an invention of people who are very experienced in financial trading and derivatives trading uh, in, in the whole area of, of commodification. And what actually happens partly as a result of that is that they take on the climate issue, but they not only ignore the social aspects because it's not relevant to how you can make a profit out of a new climate commodity, but they also subtly change the climate problem itself in order to make it into an issue that can be commodified. We all know that the, the climate issue basically boils down to a question of fossil fuels. The problem is that fossil fuels are being taken out of the ground and burned, and the carbon dioxide goes into the air, the oceans, the vegetations, rock formations, and so forth and it accumulates in that circulating system above the ground and some of it accumulates in the atmosphere creating global warming. This is the problem. It follows from that that to deal with this problem we have to build a political movement to stop the fossil fuels coming out of the ground. It's been proved, the experience of the carbon market in the last 15 years has proved empirically that this is indeed the wrong approach because the carbon market has actually made climate change worse through all sorts of subtle mechanisms. For example, in Europe we have what is called a cap and trade system whereby uh, companies that are especially dependent on fossil fuels, companies that need fossil fuels in order to survive, uh, are given the opportunity to do nothing. All they have to do is buy some carbon permits or some carbon pollution rights from somebody else who is able to do something, who is not so dependent on fossil fuels. But of course it's precisely the companies that are most dependent on fossil fuels where immediate action has to be taken. Uh, in order to address this dependence in fossil fuels. Uh, similarly, in, in countries like Brazil, which uh, up until now have been participating in the carbon market, not as a country that, whose own emissions has, have been limited, but as a country which produces extra pollution rights for sale to Europe, uh, in Brazil also, uh, this carbon market is not helping climate change. It is not only not dealing with the social issues in any satisfactory way, but it's not even dealing with the climate problem. If you look at the companies in Brazil that are selling the green pollution rights or the permits to pollute to Europe, what you see is a list of companies that are actually the most fossil dependent companies in Brazil, some of the worst environmental offenders in Brazil. ThyssenKrupp, the German firm, for example, is a, is a good example. They're, uh, according to Fabrina Furtado and her research, they're going to be uh, uh, emitting uh, something like 70% of all of the emissions in Rio are coming from this one uh, German uh, metal steel operation. Uh, and yet this operation through the carbon market is actually being allowed to sell, not only does it not have to pay, but it's actually being allowed to sell pollution rights to other polluting firms in Europe. Uh, this is not only making climate change worse in Europe because those firms can continue to pollute, it's making climate change worse in Brazil everywhere. because. It's and local people's rights are also being violated at the same time in Europe and the US and elsewhere because the companies that are buying the pollution rights from countries like Brazil are polluting in Europe and are polluting in uh, places like California. Who are they polluting the most? They are polluting the poorest people because that's where the factories are built. 
uh, this is a fact of environmental racism in both Europe and, and the US. So again, uh, there are social problems being created and exacerbated by the carbon market in addition to the fact that it doesn't deal with the global warming prob problem to begin with. Actually, it has a lot to do with the carbon markets and climate change because many of these dams, may maybe most of these dams, certainly scores of dams in India and hundreds of dams in China, are being certified by the United Nations carbon market so that they can sell pollution rights to Europe uh, because they're hydroelectric dams, they're supposedly low carbon, no fossil fuels, so everything's okay, everything's fine. Uh, and, they, and if we build a dam, we should be allowed to, to uh, uh, give an excuse to Europe to continue polluting because we're taking care of the carbon dioxide here, which we otherwise would have emitted. Nobody knows whether that's true or not because you can't predict the future, but that's the, that's the technical justification. So what happens is these dams are coming in, they are interfering with the very climate positive methods and ways of life of local people. What's going to happen when the dams are built? They're going to destroy not only this low carbon way of life, the agricultural techniques and so forth, they're also going to destroy the knowledge that the people used in order to construct this low carbon way of life around themselves.